This tire is leaking somewhere. Oh, there it is. There you go. I guess that's pretty obvious. It didn't leak at all, and then I parked it one day. Look, it's leaking over there, too, by the valve stem. Leaking right there, too. Man, that bead's leaking everywhere. It didn't leak at all, and then one day, all of a sudden, it just went flat. So, it's not a good tire, but it's good enough to roll the chassis around on. So, we're going to break the bead down and uh, clean that up and see what's going on. First thing I'm going to do is take the valve stem out, the core out of the valve stem that is, the needle. You can get these little tools about anywhere. You know, this isn't something for guys that, you know, do the same thing I do. It's more like somebody that, you know, has never done this before. So you just take that little needle out. And you see that tool right there? So the needle fits in that tool. See how it's notched like that. Just pull that thing out. We'll let it let all the air out. You can see it's still bubbling. Then we got to break the bead. There we go. She's flat now. There we go. Man, look at that. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is where is it? Take my bead breaking hammer. You can do this about anything. Some people will take a 2x4, run it up like this, and then drive a car up on the 2x4 and push down on the bead and break it. I opted to buy this hammer a while ago because we seem to be doing a lot of tires in spurts. Okay, I've got both beads broke loose. Now at this point you could use uh, dish soap, diesel fuel, anything that's slick. And we're going to put it around this bead in here. Now, this run, the rim is obviously rusty, so I'm gonna go ahead and use actual tire soap. It's, uh, I got this, you can get it off Amazon, it's not expensive. Um, I only use it on putting ti new tires on or trying to take off real rusty stuff because, you know, soap or diesel fuel is far cheaper than this stuff, but I'm using it because this rim is so rusty around here is what I expect so I'm just gonna go ahead and smear it all up now I'm taking this off and there's such a thing as what's called the drop center all right you can see this how the rims flat and then it kind of comes in so we need to lay that bead in that drop center so that whichever side the drop center is closest to that's the way the tire comes off doing it the way I do it all right so just take some tire irons and again we expect this to be a struggle so I'll take one I'll step down in here so that elite lets the tire that bead go down in that drop center so I'll get both feet over here and then I'll just try and bring it see if I can get in there. All right. and then bring this up like this now you can see the source of my leak, it's rust. That's just actual hard rust on the rim. So I expect this to be a little difficult, maybe not, but the thing about using these bars is you can use pry bars, you don't have to use these tire irons. I did it with pry bars for a long time. Just don't get greedy with your bike. You just gotta do a little bit at a time and then pop one out and just keep working your way around and again i'm trying to do this one-handed which is not ideal but yeah we're struggling here Jam it down in there. Don't get greedy. You just continue your bite. You see how that keeps popping off? And then what'll happen is you get, this is the part where you need two hands because you jam that in there pretty good. And as you come around, previous one will 
fall out. And it's pretty, this isn't as tough as it may look, but. Okay, so here you can see where the rust at, is at here. So what we'll do is we'll take a wire wheel and we'll clean all the rust off the tire. We're gonna get the tire off and then clean the bead. So the other side, it comes off, all right? It's gonna come off this way. So we don't need to lube this part of the bead. We need to lube the inside part up inside there. So what I'll do is get the tire down the drop center, just like that. And then I'll take the lube and I'll put it on the inside of this bead right here. Now I'm gonna do that here and, and I'll bring you back as soon as I got it on there. All right. So as rusty as this is, I went ahead and put that lube on the rim right here. So it's on the tire end there, and then it should come through. And to pop it through, it's really not that hard. It's just a matter of getting your bar set up just right. So we're gonna tilt the rim in a little bit, run our bar in, and grab see there it is see that we're gonna grab that lip making sure our tires in the drop center and we want to do this and then we're gonna pop this a few times and then this will pop the tire will pop up this way sometimes you can stand on it just depending on how bad it is how rusty so let me pop that off Now you can see the rust build up in here. Now, I said I was gonna use a wire wheel, but I don't because typically what a wire wheel does is polishes rust. I'm gonna use a flap disc and I'm just gonna clean that all up. All right, so I got the flap disc in there, got her cleaned up. It had some pretty good rust in here. So um, I've got this, both beads all cleaned up good now. Got all the rust off. And then I went ahead and took the flap disc to the tire and got all the rust off the bead in here too. If you're gonna do that, you just gotta be careful. I know common sense isn't so common anymore, but you know, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna have to buy a little. I think Walmart sells it every now and again. Sometimes they have a special. Now keep in mind, this tire is really not any good. It's just gonna make it easier to roll this thing around rather than having a flat tire all the time, so. I'm gonna go ahead and prime and paint this real quick when it dries, then we'll start mounting it up. All right, so while that's drying, we'll take uh, our tire soap, which is, like I said, it's, you can use about anything, anything slick, and we'll put a generous supply on here, paying close attention to the inside because we don't want to tear the bead even though it's a junk tire I mean it's not completely junk but you know what I'm saying so we'll lube this up real good in here and then we'll do the other side now when this goes on uh, this side's gonna go on first then this side will go next so we want to make sure I put some on here on the inside of this lip and then I also do the rim because if you can tell, there's a pretty good, well, maybe you can look here, there's a pretty good lip right there. And sometimes that makes it difficult. So I'll just put a generous slather of lube in there. And uh, seems to help. Sometimes I'll just rub it in real good here. Old tires are the worst, like they'll get stiff with age. So, uh, I have a real old tire I'll put it out in the sun let it bake in the sun for a while before I decide to put it back on and I don't mind getting a little on me it makes it easier to get this thing mounted okay all right now we're just at the mercy of the paint 
I chose gray because it was already gray and I would get it on the outside. Not that it really matters, but you know. Okay, we'll bring you back when we're mounting it. Okay, make sure we got the right side going the right way. We want the raised white letters in on this wheel. And get it in here. So most of the time, you can do this without bars. You just shove this tire around with your knees if it's flexible enough. tell you which way to use these bars. If you get your tire on and it didn't hurt the feet, I don't think it matters which way you use them. That's the way I see it. So put that down in the drop center and then we're just going to small bites. Just small bites all the way around. It's pretty simple. This is where I have to tell you it's best if you have a tire cage, something to um, protect you. It goes inside a, a steel cage where if you air it up and the tire would go past the beads, uh, it wouldn't hurt you. But definitely don't stand over top of it. Now hopefully the beads are going to seat. The tire wasn't off for very long, but if it don't, Bring it back once the uh, air compressor shuts off.
All right, so it's all aired up and I cleaned up around the bead and I uh, put water down in here around the bead on both sides and around the valve stem and I look for leaks and I don't have any. Looks like it's sealed up pretty good. I guess time will tell, um, but uh, that's, that's the gist of it. Um, the significance of painting it is because if you clean it all up and you got bare metal, you know, and you start getting rust building up in here, on the back side of that lip it will push the tire away from the bead and start leaking so that's why i clean them up with a flap disc and like i said a lot of guys will tell you, you i'm using them bars wrong you got to do blah blah who cares all i care about is that did i get it my tire on the wheel without damaging the tire or the wheel and we did so there you go now that tire we're going to put it back on that chassis and move on to the next project all right guys, it's back on the chassis and it's been sitting here for about four and a half, five hours now and it hasn't lost a bit of air. It's still at 50 pounds just like where I put it. You may be asking why I spent so much time. I took all the time to do this on an old chassis and old tires because my philosophy is simple. It's hard to take the time to do it the first time. I certainly don't want to have to do it again. So take the time to do it right the first time.